Last stop in our tour of 2018 most popular hackster project. This segment is all about art bots. Ah, can't wait. So let's start off with stringent, the $15 wall plotter. So we're actually starting off with three different drawing bots. What's cool is that all three of these reached the most popular list of hackster projects this year, and they're completely different in how they work. So this first one is a type called a V plotter, which uses a couple of strings and basically a motorized carriage that is moved around in order to create an image on an arbitrarily large surface. The canvas size is basically determined by where you put the ends of the string and of course how much string you have. They have a really comprehensive tutorial here, including issues that they ran into, such as like the problems of a trapezoid string shape versus like a triangle. Uh, apparently you have to cross the strings in this design in order to get stability. And then they also talk about how you add zip ties to the carriage in order to prevent any resulting issues with stability, since it kind of wants to twist afterwards. All kinds of fancy math that you don't have to do because they've already done it for you. You can just reference their equations and use them for your own setup. Lots of really useful videos and information about testing the setup. And you get some pretty decent results here. If if you're looking for something a little more precise, although also a bit smaller scale, this is a really fascinating build called uh, the Polar Drawing Machine. And of course what makes it polar is that it uses polar coordinates. Instead of your usual Cartesian sort of XY thing going on, you've got an angle and a radius. The radius is the distance that the pen is from the center of the plate, and then of course the angle is you know, the amount of rotation that it's at. So you can plot any position on the plate that's rotating using this setup, and so you only need one continuously rotating motor, another like stepper or something driving this worm gear up above. Another fun thing about this is that it may look kind of like a toy. It looks definitely really cute and maybe a bit toy-like, and that's because it's made with Fisher Technic parts. In fact, this company has, for example, a 3D printer set and things that really help a young person transition from sort of Tinker Toys stage all the way to sort of STEM genius stage. One more thing about this uh, that I love is that it gets really precise drawings. Have a scroll through here if you wanna see some more examples, it's very cool. Even though they were using a kit, they also 3D printed a couple of parts, including this gear here. Our third drawbot is a little <laughs> a little two-wheeled guy that drives around on a surface and draws on that. So you've got the sort of wall-mounted one, you've got the stationary one, and then you've got this sort of like art rover that you can design to look like whatever you want. I think it'd look really cute as a ladybug, but that's just me. Um, this one runs on Google Android things, and it uses a laser cutter, along with a couple of stepper motor driver chips that you assemble on a breadboard. And I think this is cool because it's definitely a step up uh, in sort of complexity. So check this out. You're using one of these Adafruit Perma Proto board things and just putting sockets on there and then sticking the chips in. And that's definitely much more, it feels more sophisticated of a project than some others you might be used to, but the instructions are plenty clear so that you don't have to worry about like getting lost or like being overly challenged by this or like being super intimidated by this. And another cool thing about it that's kind of sophisticated is the way that they use these laser cut pieces. Like look at this, they, this is not a 3D printed part. They've created sort of these slotted pieces that slide together in order to hold a pen. Uh, and that way you don't need a 3D printer. You can just have a laser cutter and that could be faster than waiting for everything to 3D print for hours and hours. Instead, you might just have like a, a half hour cut job and then you'd have everything you'd need for this, which I think is pretty sweet for like quick builds and fast iteration. Or since this could be a cool classroom project, you could produce a number of these in fairly short space of time. Neat. Now this one reminded me instantly of my friends at Sustainable Magic's uh, robotic flowers, which run on this sort of filament system and will open and close in response to distance sensors, basically. These folks have taken it a step further and it uses uh, the same sort of like open-close mechanism, which is this really cool cable pull system attached to a motor so that there's a sort of like radial opening effect that's always in sync which is really nice, and it uses fishing line to sort of tie everything together. Also fiber optic cables for this beautiful sort of glowing effect. A big thing that they've brought into this is the ability for it to recognize emotions, and it uses Android things and ML kit. So when it detects a face, then ML kit infers the expressions 
So running inferences is a term in machine learning and artificial intelligence about like basically analyzing it and outputting a result. And so this is what it does. It takes an input face and tries to figure out like what your emotion is and then it responds with certain colors and uh, animations. I think it's just beautifully done. And it's partly made out of diffusing material, which definitely helps with the aesthetics. It's just super gorgeous. It's so comprehensive that I'm having trouble even loading it. This is a really fascinating one, inspired by a video by Fran Blanche about the Nemo tubes that she got hold of that are incredibly rare. And they're really beautiful. And even if you don't have access to these though, you can make something that looks kind of similar with six LCDs uh, and these convex glass lenses that you place in front of them, little bubble lenses. It's sort of emulating the look of a really classic, rare and beautiful technology with a more modern form that can simulate the same effect. So here, since it's a clock, there's six digits, and so six individual little LCD screens, which are removed from their original packaging and modded a little bit. Some 3D printed parts are added. We're using heated inserts again. Second time in this series those have come up. Definitely something I have to try. And they have this really ingenious way of combining these backlightless LCDs with LEDs that provide the illumination to produce this just really sort of soft glowing effect that then gets channeled through these bubble lenses to kind of look like the original thing. It's very nice. And we're gonna close with a couple of just fun things. Uh, they call this a toy, I call it art. I think it's beautiful and I would love to see more complex interpretations of how this effect could be used. I'm totally fascinated by magnetic le levitation and some people do, you know, create these levitating lamps that also use inductive charging. I'm not quite there yet <laughs> as a maker, um, but this does seem like a project that I could approach and be like, oh, well, maybe I can do this. One of the cool things about this project is how they use a mesh grid over the bottom which houses the electronics and then they use this little stick possibly like a matchstick or a toothpick or something or just a short dowel rod to push in this case it looks like they're pushing the reset button so that they can place these magnets in place it's just a nice little project and you can order the pcb off of osh park to create your own plus some neat stuff about like hall effect sensors and magnetics in there finally another hackster staffer has been getting up to some hacks this year my colleague monica created these flaming palm trees uh to do flame effects in the desert what i admire a lot about this is first up here's this original drawing and here's how the final thing came out and it's so rare for me anyway that like I create an original idea and then the end product looks anything like that which on the one hand I love because it's like part of the creative process but also there's something admirable about being able to like take something out of your head and like create it in the real world so Huge props for that. So it runs on a teensy and uses a bunch of recycled materials in the construction, which I love. And of course, long nights soldering faulty LEDs is a part of the process as well. You can check out the code on GitHub as well. As usual, that is linked at the bottom of the project. I hope you have found some inspiration from the last year's successes and most popular projects. I think there's something in here for pretty much everyone from the complete beginner to people who are super sophisticated makers or professionals. And I can't wait to see what goes into this video next year. Take a hint from these people and produce a really nice tutorial and you're a lot more likely to get tons of people being interested in your project and sharing it around and coming back again and again to reference like how how did they do that again like there's an infinite wealth of tips and techniques that everyone can bring to a project even if you've seen the idea in the wild before i completely encourage you to give it a go and put your own spin on something thanks for watching and stick around because our next series is about the best tools from 2018 and stick around because our next series is about the best tools of 2018 which you might use to build a top project for next year happy new year